next, we will get some special insight from the best real estate broker in the United States, Richard Steinberg from Douglas Elliman. Uh, and he's going to first, here we're going to roll some footage of an amazing $15 million one bedroom apartment. That is insane uh, that he showed Peter last week. Cool. Hello, everyone. Welcome to 781 Fifth Avenue, also known as the Sherry Netherland Hotel. My name is Richard Steinberg, or better known as Jonathan Steinberg's father. But let me tell you a little bit about the apartment. It's 30th floor, which is considered one of the tower residences. It's about 2,500 square feet. The present owners decided to gut renovate it into a one bedroom, dressing room, and library apartment. What you have to understand about all of the rooms, and particularly this wood paneled library, is that you have ceiling heights of almost 11 feet and views of the park from almost every room. When you have homes all over the world and you have a lot of money, who needs a second bedroom? You just put your guests up in the hotel. So they've taken all of this room and converted it into a dressing room with his and her baths. Every bit of furniture has been imported from Paris, woods that have been imported from South America, and carpeting that is silk from Paris. For a mere $15 million, you too can get your one bedroom west and south views of Central Park. It's probably the finest example of any one bedroom and library apartment that I've ever seen in New York City. Now that was one pretty looking apartment, I would have to say. Our next guest, without further ado, is John's dad and a global marketing consultant with Douglas Elliman right here in New York City, Richard Steinberg. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Looking very sharp with a nice uh, a nice crew right behind us as well. Welcome. Right, this is my team, Matthew, Alex, Manuel. Okay, so now that apartment was very nice that we just saw. Are you only dealing with luxury listings? Um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, um, we like to think of ourselves as a top tier of real estate. So uh, we actually came out with the Wall Street Journal rankings. So our average sale price is second in the nation out of one million brokers. So we're wow. very proud of that so accomplishment. So Matthew, what were the, here take the mic Matthew. What were the team's gross, how do you do it, by quarter or, or year? How do you think yeah. about, what? We think about it by year. Okay, so what was the gross number of sales that got you guys number two? Well, our total sales volume was close to 170 million for the last year, and okay. our average sales price was 12 million 300 and change. And that was what you won the prize for? Yes. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't call it a prize. It was an award. <laughs> a ranking. Recognition. A ranking recognition, right. Okay, I feel like you're being a little nitpicky. On, I mean, I'm giving you a compliment. You're lucky I'm not being tough on you right now. Okay? Well, you, first of all, you're not being tough, but I, I just want to say that I'm a little bit insulted. I am your father. And yes. the fact that you would have Ryan on, Ryan Serhant on ahead of me, okay. when your own father is in the business, is a little bit insulting. Melissa, Melissa booked him. Um, all right, so what is each person's specialty on the team? How does it work, or, or are you all kind of utility players? How does it work? We're all team members. We all share in the commissions. We all share in the deals, the exclusives, okay. the selling, the buying. So we're um, there's no distinction, except I'm the top dog. Okay, and what are some of the big <laughs> listings or the big stuff? What's the stuff you're working on now? And, and everyone can feel free to talk. You don't have to be the only person talking. Okay. Uh, we have a listing at... Uh, okay, that, oh, sorry. We have a listing at Beacon Court right now. Um, it's on the market for $72 million currently, so that would definitely be uh, on the higher end, I would say. You have a $72 million, um, have a $72 million listing? Wow. Million and for listing. the audience, what is One Beacon Court? They might not know where that is. Um, it's a beautiful uh, luxury building on the uh, east side. Um, 58. 58. Yes. It's the Bloomberg building, right? Yeah, the Bloomberg yep. building. Oh, right we above know that well. Okay. Yes. Um, How big is the apartment? Um, 9,000 9, 9, square feet. Okay. Uh, some of the most amazing views of the city I've ever seen. Yes, I've been in that life. building. Supposedly, yes. I think Jay-Z and Beyonce were living there for a little while. Yeah, it would not right. surprise me, yeah. All I, right. And she still lives there. She uses the apartment as her closet. Right. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. I kind of have that problem, too. With now, the one, one story that I always look back on that I can't remember, right? You, Steve Jobs had an apartment at one point that you showed, didn't yes. he? Tell everybody about that apartment. You said it looked like an I, uh, looked like a, a, a Mac. Well, it looked said. like you were living in an iPhone. I mean, it was, it Where was, was crazy. Where was it? It was at, uh, I think, Perry Street, 173 Perry Street, That's which crazy. was in Tribeca. And it was a duplex, yeah. and um, it was all white. Wall, very um, institutional. Uh -huh. and, and he had made it into a one-bedroom or something? A two-bedroom, but it was about 9,000 square feet. Made it into a two-bedroom. Where are the bedroom. buyers coming from right now? Is it China? Is it Russia? Where do you see the most demand come right now for, for, these, for these 72 million, for these mega expensive apartments? That's a great question. Um, obviously, we all know that Russia and China are out of the business now. Um, any oligarch, Russian oligarch who had money now mm -hmm. has his money in London, so they no longer keep their money. So if they haven't pulled it out in the past year or two, they're not there. They're out. Yeah. We've sold most of them. Actually, our team has sold two of the top Russians. Um, 
We've had two transactions. One was for $57 million and the other was for $78 million. Um, Chinese, their economy was such a false economy in yeah. my opinion, my humble opinion, that they're out of the market, they're not buying. So I think we're back to the hedge funders, you know, the Wall Street finance guys, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. yeah More Americans buying the high-end stuff now and kind of there's a little bit of a discount on the high end. so. They kind of waited a while and now they're What, what does that mean, there's a discount on the high end? You're seeing developers give a little bit of um, negotiating rather than only sticking to the asking price. And is that because there maybe just isn't as much demand? There's the cool down in the overall market? Absolutely, yeah, on this especially on the high end. Sure, and what would you attribute that to? Um, well, right now we're getting a lot of inventory on the high end, so people have a lot to choose from. So. Okay, now I know in, in home buying there's always a spring selling season which happens to be the, the best, the busiest, etc. Does that exist for apartments? No more because um, because we've had such an influx of foreign buyers and they're, especially in South America, remember their seasons are the opposite of our season. Yep. So therefore, the summer was traditionally much lower um, in terms of volume and activity. Uh, now it's just as busy as the winter. So there's no, there's no um, slow season. And especially in New York now, it's become a condo market versus a co-op market in the past yes. decade. That makes a big difference. Now why is that? Why condos versus co-ops? Um, Right now, all the new money that's being generated is from people who have accumulated in a very short time. Uh -huh. Therefore, they don't have the credentials to get into a co-op. Remember, a co-op, you're buying shares in a building, not actual real property. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's like uh, buying into a country club. Yep. They don't have the references, they don't have the lineage of New York, and they don't want to disclose their assets, which is the most important thing right. as, as well. Right, that $15 million apartment, how much money do you need for that? Well, that $15 million apartment, you probably would need about $30 million liquid assets. When we say liquid, stocks, bonds, checking, savings, uh -huh. anything that you can transfer in 24 hours into cash. Even bonds. Even bonds, yeah. Okay. All right. Counts as liquid. What, but uh, that building is a co-op, and I just wanted, that's a very good point. That building is a co-op, but it does allow corporate ownership, and it does allow trust, which is very unusual for a co-op. Okay. But it comes with the $21,000 a month maintenance. Right. Okay, so. so let me ask you a question. I know that you guys don't deal with this, but let's say you're a 23-year-old person watching the show right now, okay? Right. On Facebook. And, you know, maybe you've got a little bit of savings, right? What, someone who's got a little bit of savings, what should they do in terms of real estate? Should they be renting? Should they look to save up a $100,000 deposit and, and buy a $400,000 studio in Manhattan? I mean, you know, what would you advise someone who's making a decent early income? Uh, two things, if he has rich parents, then they will guarantee uh, in a condo or a co-op, so that's what he should do. Because interest rates, remember, are so low. Uh -huh. uh, they're still at a traditionally all-time low that it really doesn't pay not to buy because mm -hmm. uh, rent obviously is not tax deductible. Mm -hmm. And the amount that you would pay for rent in New York far outweighs the cost of a one bedroom or a studio apartment in New York City. So if they can work it out with guarantees, they should buy. We had The Economist on from Zillow um, just a few weeks ago who was saying that as long as you're going to stay in a place for two years, even probably for New York City, it does at this point make sense to buy if you can't put down that di uh, down payment because interest uh, costs are so low, borrowing costs are so low, and because the prices to rent are just through the roof these days. Absolutely. We say three years, three to five years, you'll never lose money on real estate. And other than what I've just learned, exotic cars, yes. uh -huh. real estate is your best investment over time. Ex exotic cars are better than real estate? Absolutely. If you pull up the numbers, anyone that bought like Ferraris in the 60s, or um, I just, it is the number one appreciative asset that anyone can buy. Last question I'll ask you. Douglas Elman, one of the largest brokerage firms in the United States, give us, give us, I mean, look, I know you're not corporate there, but give us the best you can. What is the organization focused on right now? Are there new markets? Are there new ways of working that the company is thinking about that, you, that, you, that you're aware of? That's a great question. I think um, what makes it different, I was with another firm for 22 years. I recently moved over to Douglas Elliman a year ago. I think it's um, information sharing and technology. We have a whole uh, uh, floor dedicated to technology, IT, information, social media, sharing information. And you brought it up before, young people are buying at a very early age, much earlier than they did years ago. And by the time they come to us, they've already virtually toured the apartment. They know that they want the apartment. It's almost like a second showing when we take them to the physical apartment. Matthew, right. Matthew drones. I mean, I know my dad is not really aware of technology that much, but for you, are you doing 360 degree <laughs> videos? Are you thinking about VR, any of you guys? Do you want to take this group into the next generation, given that your leadership is a little bit older in the company? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, we actually, drones are commonly used now with new developments, so people get an idea of what the view is going to look like before the building is ever built. 
And um, with virtual reality, we actually just started talking to somebody who handles virtual reality tours. Um, it seems to be popular in Los Angeles, where if somebody doesn't want to drive from Beverly Hills to Malibu, yeah. they can go into your office and they can tour the house from there. there. Manuel actually is our social uh, media expert. Yes. He's the youngest one on the team. So, <laughs> so Manuel, actually, Manuel, yeah, inter introduce like, yourself real quick. I'm the youngest one on the team. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a voice. <laughs> we say in the, what were you the, doing before you joined the team? Uh, I was doing modeling. Modeling? Yeah, I did modeling for 10 Shocking. years and now I, I'm <laughs> transitioning in uh, real estate. I'm very happy about it. What's harder, modeling or real estate? What? What's, What's harder? Which, which is harder? I, I think real estate, it's difficult to make a deal, yeah. especially at the beginning, but it's a much better job. And you I still got to look good probably, right? That's part of the job, what to about, make the what sales. About, what about the people you worked for in modeling versus the people you work for in real estate? Who's more difficult to work for? Which, which kind of manager? <laughs> 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 Here we go. You don't have to know him long enough to know what he's trying to have you say, how difficult I am, which is obviously not true. No, I, I actually, it's not, it's not that difficult. No, the best thing I said, on the apartment that you're seeing, the apartment, the $15 million apartment, a broker came in. It's a great story. She said, I love the apartment. She said, oh, and he's so good looking. I said, for a million dollars, more he can stay with the apartment. <laughs> yeah. He can model right that on comment, the couch. That, that comment's a little bit offensive, but given that you're over 60 years old, I think that, 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 that I, I, I think it's okay. Okay. All right, guys. Matthew, let's, Alex, and, Manuel, let's, Richard, you have to stay thank there. you. You have a microphone move. connected. You don't move. Peter gets Peter gets very upset. Now, do you notice if Peter, I will yell at you, you like I yelled but, at your son. But, but you cannot. You can't tell if Peter's upset because of the Botox injections like into his forehead. Oh, he, has so no, he has no. He has no facial. Have any of you guys had Botox? You've had Botox, right? Not yet. How about you? Do you get Botox in your forehead? Uh, That's a yes. no comment. Uh, yeah. No comment. You went. You went to absolutely. Fa you went to absolutely fabulous last I night. Did, yeah. Was it good? Yeah. It was wait, where, where did you see that? I saw on your Instagram. Uh, it was on Twenty Third Street. There was a premiere. What it's is a, that? It was, it's, it's like a, a big British show that yeah, people love. British oh. comedy. It was fantastic. Yeah. Love you guys it. have a nice life. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> coming up next, we will have Four Squares. Sarah Spagnolo. I guess they sub somebody in, right, okay. Peter? Okay. 